others cut their first lap and then cut them off. Right. Hi, people trying to the following the quarter. Good evening, everybody, who's just joined us on stream, I think. Hopefully, hello, Chris. Hello, uh, PC. Are you streaming? Uh, I, I, I haven't. Right, what am I just doing? I'm holding the screen. Is the audio yeah. Hi everybody! <laughs> Hi everyone, we made it! How are you two? We're gonna just go straight in this year. No lube, no nothing, just straight in. Uh, good job. For those who are used to professional organisations, no Don't worry, we're, we're, not, we're, we're, not, we're not sorry. Either. We're not sorry. Yep. For those who are just joining us, we've made it. I'm Chris Riddell, we've got Marcus Alivari. Evening. Evening, my co-commentator. And who are we? So we got, we got... Benjamin Rhodes. Rhodes. Benny Rhodes. And Brock Harvey. Hello. Oh, shit. <laughs> and there's Bye. our no swearing gone already. Don't talk and drive. <laughs> Don't talk and drive. No, I that last okay. So while Chris actually sets up Automobile Store, I'll give us a bit of a brief of what's actually happening here. We're starting TCAC Season 3, which is all-wheel drive based. We're moving back to sort of the modern coupes of TCAC Season 1 and uh, giving them all-wheel drive power and drivability. So we have our first race of the season coming up literally in moments. Uh, the cars are just making their way to the grid. Um, so we have, uh, we're at the old Adelaide F1 circuit. We'll give a tour of that once we get things underway. But we have Brenton Hobson uh, in his usual spot at number one. Uh, second place will be Damien Rasmussen. Third off the grid will be Will Devonish, Then Brock Harvey, Scott Nolan, Adam Carrington, a new man to the series out of sixth. Gary Neville in seventh in the GNEV car. Termo, Luke Joyner, Cracker round out the 10. We've got Cam Rutledge, Darren, who's again a newcomer to the series and all washed out BMW this time around. Brian Walsh in 13th. Glenn Miles, uh, 14th. Brendan Ross down the end in 15th. Steve Bolger, 16th. Wayne, I'm guessing that's Wayne Whitmore in 17th. Mike Coulston hasn't made it out of the garage, but he was meant to start in 18th. And then Lime Mitch, 20th. And then we have actually Wayne Whitmore out of 20th. So I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, hopefully we get some uh, rectification on that. Yeah, I'll jump in. Uh, Wayne is uh, a different Wayne, uh, also known as air mowing in Discord. So cool. there are two Waynes this season, both called Wayne. We're not going to get confused by that at all. Wayne, as the Wayne, cars Wayne two. grid up on the line. And I hope we actually have pictures now, please, Chris no, Fidel. No, my game thing's stupid. But in the meantime, start talking. Are we about to go racing? We are about to go racing. We are literally lights away. Uh, so cars are on the grid as we start on the start of TCAC Season 3. It is Brendan Hobson who gets a better jump. There's a, someone mid-pack who's gone nowhere, but everyone else seems to get away. Cars are fanned out three wide in the middle of the pack as they go into Turn 1. It is Hobson who will take the whole shot as I think it's... Uh, Who's that in third place who went over the curve? That might have even been Brock Harvey who went over the curve to take third place. But it's Hobson and Rasmussen. Rasmussen dives down the inside into turn four and makes the move to start the race. And everyone else seems to have gotten through cleanly, mostly. Yes, there's seen, everyone seems to file through the S's as we get underway in TCAC season three. A little bit of contact down the mid pack and someone's actually hit the wall in turn four. I think that was Gary Neville or his cracker who were side by side heading into turns five and six, but they all make it out. And someone's hit the wall on the inside. That's one of the BMWs. It is, in fact, Darren, who's come to grief on the inside of turn six as they follow through the fast S's on to, I think that's uh, Rundle Street out now because we're on the old F1 circuit. So short run into turn 11 with this big curb on the inside and then the long run down Bartels Road uh towards the hairpin which is on the modern circuit turn nine so it is damian rasmussen who leads the way from brenton hobson who's got a great run out of that corner as they fire fire into the hairpin and uh rasmussen will hold the lead uh then it will be scott nolan brock harvey who's been uh touched up by will devonish i try to go side by side for that section i mean in fact got a yellow flag i think no that was just for a moment uh, everyone else is seeming to get through mostly okay. In fact, Cracker and Termo are going to go side by side in the two team cars through the modern turn 11. Uh, Cracker goes all the way, uh, forces Termo rather, all the way over the curb, but they manage to skate out the other side onto the Victoria Park section. They're still side by side as they come into the hairpin. Termo gets four wheels slide going as they go side by side in the hairpin. They're almost going to touch. In fact, they do touch. Uh, Termo pushes Cracker wide and that's got an angry pack as they go down the main straight. Oh, someone's off in the background. Someone is well off. It was the uh, Brian Walsh um, Lancer, which has gone off 
um, but it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. That's the first lap down in this 25 minute race. If we head back up the front, it is still Damien Rasmussen leading now from Will Devonish, who's made moves on Scott Nolan and Brock Harvey through the S's. Uh, so now we actually have uh, uh, it's Volkswagen Lancer Honda Lancer Astra at the Ooh. front of the field. Um, before we get down to the middle of the pack, Luke Joyner, Gary Neville, and Brendan Ross in a battle for eighth position as they go through the fast chicane. Oh, big lose for Devonish through the fast chicane. He was very lucky to hold onto it on the curb there. And he's right in the clutches now of Scott Nolan as they go down Rundle Street towards, I think, what's, what's it on that old circuit now? Turn 10? Yes. Turn 10, the yes. sweeper, yep. Oh, and Nolan gets very out of shape over the curb, but there's a lot of runoff there, which is uh, unusual for that kind of corner uh, in the modern circuit. But what that's done is that's given Devonish just a little bit of breathing space. Uh, so now he's uh, been able to get away. In fact, Brenton Hobson's in the lead. What happened to Damien Rasmussen? I'm just going to see if I can quickly scroll back and find it. It must have been through the S's because Hobson's gotten onto that back straight in the lead so i'm not sure what's happened there but hobson now taking his familiar position at the front of the field in tcac and nolan did end up getting devonish down the back straight Thanks. so as we approach the end of that two kiwi have we got pictures yet no because i can't get in the session ah oh, hasn't been rip. set up has been set up for that ah. have you got all the updates yes i'd say current session closed Ooh. All right, radio show. <laughs> classic, classic Kiwi Chris, for fuck's sake. Uh, that's it. I don't even care. Uh, There's one in professional stream. Come back in about 25 minutes to race two. Oh, hello. We've got Glenn Miles making love to the turn 13 barrier. <laughs> oh, no, he's actually gone in on the back of Brian Walsh. So Brian Walsh and Glenn Miles are just... just having a beautiful old time clipping through that barrier um, as we return to the head of the field uh, it is again Brenton Hobson from Damien Rasmussen they go through the fast S's down East Terrace and then on to Rundle Street uh, I was actually at Rundle Street yesterday just uh, oh, as yes. a quiet your, aside your little, sh little bit of a shopping expedition yes my shopping expedition to pick up my credentials for this weekend mm -hmm. where I'll be marshalling at the Adelaide 500 um, <laughs> well what because it's a radio show I guess we can start talking radio stuff. Has the race calmed down a bit? Uh, it's a little bit. There's a very livid, livid, lively battle pack between 7th to 12th. There's in the background, Termo gets very out of shape going through turn 10, uh, which takes us on to Bartels Road. Uh, it's it, it's calmed down a bit more at the front, but this battle pack in the mid pack is going off. In fact, a bunch of Subarus are in close proximity. It looks like Steve Bolger and Cracker are going to go side by side. Bolger does take the inside line into turn 12 the hairpin at the tail oh someone's around someone's around in the middle of the circuit it is i think it's one of the astros is that brock harvey no it's not brock harvey i've lost i've completely lost where it is it's steve bolger no someone's gone around and i've completely lost it but there's been a yellow flag it was luke joiner um who went around in the middle of the circuit at turn nine everyone managed to avoid them but they scattered like a flock of seagulls at the sight of a young child with a tennis ball <laughs> Uh, they managed to all fight it through. Yeah, exactly. Uh, at the moment, it is Brenton Hobson who's just set the new fast. No, Scott Nolan has actually undercut him with the new fastest lap. Uh, and it will be... Uh, the top five have pretty much spread themselves away. Now that battle pack with that spin has kind of calmed down. It's split off into a few smaller battles. Gary Neville and Termo uh, going into turn four, almost side by side. And then Steve Bolger and Cracker, who gets very out of shape over the curb. Uh, rounding out the top 12. Great turnout in this first round of the series. As we have our first pit stopper, it is Luke Joyner, who's had that spin um, in uh, the hairpin there. While we're um, getting the stream up, yes, sorry to those who came here expecting pictures. I was literally 30 seconds too late, I think. You would have been about that, yes. Yeah, which is so unfortunate. Um, but we will be back for race two. Back or on, finally? On two. Yeah. So what is the... What are, what are we actually racing this season, Kiwi? We're racing all-wheel drive... I guess hatches, I guess you'd call them. Yeah, pretty uh, much. Yeah, it's we've got... very, very similar to what we were racing in season one, except now instead of front-wheel drive, it's all-wheel drive. Yeah, and I think we're all five-cylinder vehicles. 
or a V5? No, they're all all four cylinder. Oh, oh I, the V5 confused me. <laughs> okay, yeah. So we got we we got a Volkswagen Golf, we've got a Lancer, we've got did you say an Astra as well? Yes, uh, we are running. I think uh, Brian Walsh is actually running. Uh, not Brian Walsh, sorry. Uh, Brock Harvey is running a tribute to the Astra with the very recent announcement of Honda closing its doors essentially in Australia. You mean Honda? Holden? Holden, pardon. I'm yeah. I'm trying to watch three things happen at once here. Calm down. <laughs> but we have uh, the Subaru as well. Yep, I'm just going to interrupt you here because the battle for the lead of the race has actually gotten very, very tight. Brenton Hobson has not had the best last sector. In fact, Damien Rasmussen has set the new fastest lap of the race. And with that, he's really climbed onto the rear bumper of Brenton Hobson as they go through the fast S's, turn seven and eight onto turn nine, which brings them onto Rundle Street, uh, Rundle Road, rather, actually, because it's heading out of the city. And it is literally a three-tenth gap as they head down towards turn 10 over that big curb using a lot of curb both of them hobson runs a little wide but he actually makes that work so he's gained a little bit of time but in the slipstream the volkswagen is going to have the ponies but not quite enough to make a move into the hairpin i don't think unless rasmussen just absolutely finds something out of somewhere find some huge ginormous testicles he thought about it he thought about it <laughs> he ends up outbreaking himself just a little bit and losing a little bit of time as they head back onto the built section of racetrack through victoria park so the actual permanent part yes excellent now this racing we've got two races tonight this one's a 25 minute race which we unfortunately is a radio show currently coverage and uh, we're back to race two which is 35 minutes which is full random grid and will be full sound, full vision. It's the first race of a 10 race calendar, which I'm actually going to put on screen now so people can see. You still there? I'm there. I'm, just, just, I'm waiting thought... for the opportune moment to start <laughs> describing things. Uh, we've actually got Will Devonish in the pits, uh, one of the first front runners to take a pit stop. Um, we've also unfortunately lost uh, two races from the race already. Uh, the aforementioned Ryan Walsh and Glenn Miles um, making love to the turn 14 wall, uh, which is the modern turn 11 there. So they both decided to retire to their respective garages. Um, they they thought it was appropriate to get a room. Um, <laughs> Saves themselves for the actual string. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, as I was mentioning, it's a 10 event calendar. Uh, tonight we're starting with Adelaide Street Circuit from 1988, which is a great historic venue. Um, Adelaide Street Circuit, is both track we both know and love immensely and intimately. Intimately, in your case, yes. Yes. Um, and then we've got Northamptonshire, which is, correct me if I'm wrong, is that just Donington? I don't know. I, I actually have no idea. Mm. And then Sandown, uh, Barbagello, uh, Hendon Valley. Barbagello. Bar I know. Cool to park. Barbie's Jello. Oh, the Thunderdome. We're going to the Thunderdome. <laughs> I'm assuming it's just a street circuit. <laughs> then Londrina, Ribeiro, Preto. Finishing off the points rounds at Pukekohe on June 10. And then we've got an Enduro round at Philippon 300 on June 17th. Not for points, but that'll be a lot of fun. That'll be fun. Uh, speaking of a lot of fun, there is another move into the hairpin, this time for 11th place. Wayne Whitmore and Darren getting into it. A little bit of contact on the apex there. And they're just ahead of Will Devonish, who was the early pit stopper from the head of the field. So he's going to have to process this battle pack if he wants to make a pass. And he's actually going to try and dive onto the inside through Victoria Park. Darren just sees him at the last minute and gives him a little bit of room. No, he doesn't. They, go, ooh, they almost made contact there in the sweeper. And they do make contact. Will's been dumped. Will's been dumped into the final hairpin and he's off into the grass. Oh, that was that was reminiscent of uh, Glenn Murphy and Russell Ingle, I think. And Darren's mm. realized that and he's actually given that position back. But that's definitely not what Will Devonish would have wanted uh, heading in or uh, trying to make his way back through the field. I've also had Cam Rutledge and Brock Harvey through the pits. Um, and that battle for the lead is still uh, Hobson ahead of Rasmussen. Um, in fact, there's actually a bit of a uh, bit more of a battle through the mid pack. Um, between Lime Mitch, Adam Carrington, uh, uh, Kerrison, sorry, and Termo. So Lime Mitch, he started in 19th and he's up 14 positions now to fifth. Uh, that's, so that's, that's a impressive. big, big game. 
And we've got a yeah. tw- twenty car twenty car grid for the first race, which is twenty car grid. Yes, very impressive. And talk us through some of the new names we've got this season. That you've- uh, so we have Adam Carrington who qualified fifth, a uh, sixth rather, and he's actually managed to hold that position. He's driving a Beds RS. It's like an old Irwin uh, Team Eighteen livery on the Lancer. Oh, um, nice. we've- We've also got uh, the return of Wayne Whitmore. Um, Darren is the aforementioned BMW driver. Uh, I think there might be a problem with his livery because it's a little washed out. It looks very, um, very white. Uh, but he, So he's very, very easy to see, but not really easy to see the livery. So he's currently in 12th where he qualified. Um, we've got the return of Steve Bolger. We have this, uh, this unknown Wayne <laughs> who's <laughs> sitting in 15th. Uh, and then... Uh, everyone else is someone we have at least seen once or twice before, but to see them all in this one race at the Adelaide Street Circuit, it's a big, uh, yeah, big, big event. 20 car grid as I watch Brenton Ross use all of the curb through the center chicane. Brenton Ross, maybe not a name people will have been as familiar with in TCR, uh, sorry, TCAC. Um, but he's part of the FCR crew who do the TCR series for Automobilista Australia, as well as, AMS and Super Two, uh, okay. yeah. So very ex- well experienced enough racer. Yeah, experienced automobilist for Australia. Yeah, excellent. And for those of you wondering what sort of action we're going to see here, just take a look at the image on the screen taken from a test session. There's seven cars on it, and I think one's pushing in the right direction. <laughs> Two yeah, of which are on right. at least one wheel. Uh, we've got Termo and Neville who have just come out of the pits, hounding the rear of Brock Harvey into turn four. Um, really nice view at turn four, by the way, if you are marshalling. Uh, yes. I was there last year in the blistering sun for oh, three and four days straight. Yeah, that was not a good time. Um, but it is a, is a very good shot to see down the aces. And I do like the the old circuit, actually, how you follow East Terrace through um, past, uh, I think it's Bartels Road, and then on to... Uh, Rundle Street instead. So uh, using a bit extra of the city, of course, uh, mm-hmm. and using a lot of extra curb there was Termo. Uh, hasn't really helped him all that much in his battle for position. Uh, just an update, Will Devonish, he's uh, gaining positions. He's actually just dived down the inside of Wayne Whitmore for eighth. So he's actually ahead of a bunch of cars who haven't pitted yet. So that's actually very encouraging if you're a Will Devonish fan. Don't know why you wouldn't be. As we've got <laughs> Brenton Hobson, Lime Mitch, and Adam Carrington, a uh, Kerrison. I'm going to say Carrington the whole time for some reason through the pits. Uh, and Hobson rejoins in fourth. Um, so again, like a uh, previous series in TCAC, uh, compulsory pit stop is required. However, you are a- allowed to change as many uh, tires as you like. You must change a minimum of two, I believe. Okay. Or a. Uh... I oh, see so so two or four as you go. Shorter yep. race here. Adelaide's not usually terrible on tyres. You can probably get away no. with two in the shorter race. Probably, yeah. I'd probably see a lot of cars maybe changing just the front two, uh, just trying to get that little bit of point back in the in the car, um, especially with the all-wheel drive cars. Uh, the, just watching a few onboards of the test session from a few nights ago, the the uh, lift off oversteer in these cars is friggin' amazing. So <laughs> a lot of a lot of force goes through the front of the car. So you want to make sure that you've got that front really dialed in. Um, so you'll see a lot of car people, probably people taking just only front tires. Well, one thing ooh. I noticed. Oh yes, you. you ooh. Uh, Will Devon is just using all the curb out of the fast chicane. So turns uh, seven and eight. Uh, so coming back onto the circuit at turn nine, uh, Shane Shane Van Gisbergen style. Um, back at oh, and just behind him, Wayne Whitmore does the same thing. And Whitmore has been given a drive through for overuse of the curbs. He just got over over turn ten onto Decatur Terrace, used all of the curb on the inside, and it threw him over the curb on the outside. And the series was having none of it. That's um a shame. Now that's a big thing here, isn't it? What turn is it? Turn four. Uh, what do you mean? What turns causing the issues for the curb boost? Um, probably turn one, uh, as we have both Scott Nolan and Damien Rasmussen in the pits, and Rasmussen rejoins behind Hobson and well behind Hobson. Actually, it's a good four or five seconds that Rasmussen has lost in the pit sequence. So it will be the the center chicane for one, 
mm -hmm. um, as Cracker almost does a cool tard. He does do a cool tard into the into the pit lane. He hits the wall and he gets a penalty for it as well Ooh. in the pit lane. So that's that's no bueno for Cam Rutledge. I right, we've got a we've got an off, and that's Brock Harvey, is it? Yes, he's gone well off at the final corner. I'm gonna quickly scroll through and find out what caused that. Oh, he got onto the grass under braking and it just spun the car. Uh, so went to the outside. Yep, went to the outside. Luckily, didn't make contact with the wall, but not ideal if you're a Brock Harvey fan and not ideal if you're an Astra fan either. Yes. The Astra, which if you go on board inside, is very suspiciously like, like a voxel. <laughs> oh, no, really? Who would yeah. have thought of that? Yeah. Um, yep. So what I was going to say before you interrupted me there with the action, I was driving these cars in the test session they had yesterday around not Suz Suzuka East. Oh, God. <laughs> and You driving? They're actually not that difficult to keep on track. I think yeah, that's the, the difficulty is going to be ringing the pace out of them. Yeah, so it's especially with I think with the all-wheel drive, they're going to be much more compliant than the retro rear-wheel drive cars we had in seasons past. So mm. um, yeah, definitely a little more pliable, um, but certainly the same amount of fun. Oh god, yeah. As we have now, race leader Brenton Ross coming into the pits, uh, which. Gives the race lead back to Brenton Hobson. Um, so he retains the lead. It is Damien Rasmussen in second place. Uh, Lime Mitch gets a drive through penalty, and that must be a curb hop as well because he's just come over turn nine. Yep, and he's gone wide. Oh, well, sorry, not turn nine. Uh, modern turn nine, the exit of the hairpin. And Damien Rasmussen has also been given a penalty, and that would be for the same thing through the center chicane. And he's done it. He's got two penalties because he's gone wide over the entry of the center chicane and then again over the exit. So the game's pinged him twice. So Ooh. that's going to be that's going to be a double whammy for Damien Rasmussen, um, which will take him out of second place. That's massive. Yeah. So there's a lot of areas on this circuit where the curbs invite you to go over the top of them. Mm -hmm. I, I'd I'd say. Um, so people may remember watching the V8 supercars back in 2018 at turn seven, where you've got the curb in the middle of the street as Brock Harvey gets a penalty, which I would expect for the same thing. Maybe I'm just trying to find him on my screen. There is Brock Harvey and it is going to be through the center chicane and he goes over the curb on the center chicane. And that was all she wrote. Um, They've yeah, so incredibly harsh on that. Yeah, well, it's 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 incredibly easy to do. As I said, there was a lot of there's a lot of places where the curbs invite you to go over. So if you remember V8 Supercars 2018, a lot of people at Turn Seven, where you start to head down towards the, uh, well, head down the long straight towards Turn Eight, the sweeper, you've got the curb in the middle of the street, and then you've got the mm. entire left half of the street as runoff. Um, and so people that year realized that you were faster because the cars were more compliant to just vault the curb and use all that extra tarmac. So they kind of cracked down on that last year and Brock Harvey gets another penalty for himself. I'm going to expect that's going to be <laughs> the same thing. Uh, we've actually got a pass on Lime Mitch. Steve Bolger's moved through Lime Mitch. I think Lime Mitch with that penalty is just kind of letting him through not too difficultly. Yeah, it's probably no point. In, um... Yeah. So Rasmussen's taken his drive through and he's only dropped one position. He's taken one of his drive throughs. So he's now immediately behind Scott Nolan. Uh, mm -hmm. Brendan Ross and Will Devonish are in battle for what will become fourth. Um, and Lime Mitch has continued on, so he hasn't taken his penalty yet. Um, I'll give everyone just a quick, uh, quick view of where everyone is at the moment. So Hobson is just coming through the fast S's at turns seven and eight. He has a 12 second lead over his teammate in the Synergy Sim Racing cars, Scott Nolan. And here he comes through the fast S's now. Immediately behind him is Damien Rasmussen. Then uh, it is the battle for fourth between Will Devonish and Brendan Ross, who are just coming through turn six. Uh, they are 12 seconds behind the battle for second. Then it is Steve Bolger and Lime Mitch, again, just coming through turn six now. Then Termo, who is about three seconds behind. Gary Neville is uh, showing a very good position in ninth, uh, just five seconds away from Termo. And then it is currently Brock Harvey who rounds out the 10, but he has a drive through penalty to take. Uh, another penalty coming through Cam Rutledge. Uh, then it is the enigmatic Wayne, uh, who is in 11th, Wayne's coming through world. turn six. Wayne's World. Uh, then it is Cracker in uh, 12th, uh, Darren in 13th. 
Uh, Mike Coulston is in 14th. In fact, we've just had Aaron, uh, Adam Carrington, Car- uh, Carrison, uh, drop out of the race. So oh. I'm trying to figure out what's happened there. And my replay isn't scrolling back far enough. So he was in a good position and he's just gone. Oh, there we go. He's lost it over the center chicane is what's happened to Adam. So he's he's gone from a good position. Um, so third DNF. And we've got Scott Nolan drive through penalties. That throws the cat amongst the pigeons in that battle for second. So the very, very car- harsh curb strikes here. And Rasmussen, who's just taken his final penalty, penalty gets another one. So we are two and a half minutes left in this race. And I think three quarters of the field have had, have been given a drive through penalty for curb hopping or track limit violations is the more correct term. That's absurdity. I mean, yeah. at the same time, it's very easy to do, but you've got to make sure you have just respect those curbs just enough. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Um, so, so currently leading is Brendan Hobson. Of course, of course, of course, of course. Of course. By how far? Uh, he is 15.2 seconds ahead. And oh, come if on, you Bob, are, put your foot down. If you are wonder, wanting to follow along live timing, head over to amsoz.liveracers.com and search for the TCAC Round 1 race. Uh, there you'll be able to see a track map of where everyone is, live timing for all the sectors, and a bit of a brief overview of people's fastest laps as Termo now gets a drive-through penalty for curb uh, violation. Oh, we've got a battle for fourth here. It's Brendan Ross on the inside. Will Devonish has gone around the outside. They're almost touching and they do touch and Ross has somehow managed to hold onto it as Devonish forces his way down the inside. Uh, Ross gives him a touch up on the exit and Devonish manages to hold the position, but it could have very well been a pitch into the wall for Brendan Ross there. He was very, very lucky to hold on to the car to his Volkswagen as it pits, pitched towards the left. Um, very reminiscent of what happened to Sam Shahin at the uh, at Bathurst, for those watching the Bathurst 12-hour. Ooh. And Damien Rasmussen is taking his drive-through penalty. So this battle for third, will be uh, fourth, may become the battle for third. And Scott Nolan has come through ahead. Damien Rasmussen, he's going to exit literally just ahead of this battle. So it's going to become a three-way battle for third position, provided Rasmussen doesn't get another penalty. And he manages to sneak through the center chicane all right. So there's a gap of about two seconds um, as we wait for Rasmussen to come up the speed um, between him and this battle between Will Devonish and Brendan Ross as they head through the S's. Devonish very defensive into turn five. And he's going to... And Ras- uh, uh, Ross is going to dive down the inside into turn six. Oh, had to back out of it. Used a lot of curb there. Devonish really closed the door on him as they head towards the fast S's. And it's going to be Devonish with the advantage. But Ross gets a great run. Is he going to throw it down the inside here? He thought about it. He definitely thought about it. But he's got a mega run on the exit. And Devonish is already covering as they just go through the trees, uh, through the circuit. In fact, he's actually let he's moved back onto the racing line. But he's got very sideways over the corner, over the curbs. And now Ross is going to be in the position to pass here. He's already made the overlap. He's on the inside. He's got the high ground as they like to say over at prequel memes. Uh, and he's going <laughs> he's going to make this position very easily. He doesn't have to worry about outbreaking himself at all. Uh, Devonish tries to go the long way around, but he was very well beaten there by Ross, who just got the better run down the back straight. So we are one lap away. In fact, Devonish has tried to do the over-under and makes contact with Ross in that 90-degree left-hander, which on the modern circuit is turn 11. And they're, they, they've sorted it out, and that's actually let... Drasmussen off the hook a bit. They, he's actually given away another second. And Devonish throws it down the inside of the hairpin and goes way too deep, way too deep. And Ross has now taken that position back. Oof. Okay, so we're on the last lap now. That's been 25 minutes 25 of minutes action. Of, oh, 25 minutes of action, 25 minutes of you talking, while 25 oh, minutes well, of me trying to figure out what on earth I'm doing with AMS. And while that's been happening further up, Steve Bolger and Lyon Mitch are still at it. They're side by side over the front straight. In fact, it was a 0.2 gap over the front straight. Lyon Mitch has taken the position over Steve Bolger, who's lost a lot of time as they go through the center chicane. So he's in sixth. But at the head of the field, it is Brendan Hobson with a 22 second lead now. So a massive lead over the rest of the field. Uh, Scott Nolan, his teammate, is in second, continuing their great form from TCAC Season 2. Rasmussen, four-wheel drift out of Turn 8 
onto uh, turn nine to head down the back straight in third. And there's still this battle between Ross and Devonish. In fact, Ross has opened up a little bit of gap here over the Honda. So it looks like Devonish may have may have finally been broken as they head onto the back straight. Lion Mitch has also got a little bit of a gap over Steve Bolger, who's up nine positions, but Lion Mitch is up 13 from the uh, from his starting position. Um, then it is Gary Neville in eighth. Great result, uh, great run for Gary Neville so far. And Brock Harvey, who's gone very sideways through the fast S's, and he's thrown it back over the curb to try and block Termo from making a move. But he's he's not uh, not been able to hold off. Termo's actually on the inside. While this is all happening, Brock Harvey's so far ahead that he's actually taken the win already. Uh, Brendan Hobson, rather. <laughs> so Brendan Hob Hobbo's already won, and there's still battles going on through the field. Sorry, that's a very, very poor presenting work of me there. No, it's, so, not like Hobbo, it's not like you have cameras to speak to or anything. Exactly. Hobbo's, Hobbo's taking the win. Scott Nolan is going to come home in second, ahead of Damien Rasmussen. Uh, Ross is going to very comfortably come home in third, actually. Uh, Devonish is dropping very, very far through the field. Um, he's, actually, he's actually pushing Cam Rutledge over the line. Uh, <laughs> Cam Rutledge a, a down in 15th place. It will be Lion Mitch ahead of... Oh, no. He, uh, Devonish's ways are too long. Lion Mitch is going to grab fifth. Lion Mitch grabbed fifth of the line. Devonish was too chivalrous in his costume. <laughs> oh, God. Devo. The gap at the end was one-tenth of a second. Devonish. Oh, no. He's done the old Mario Kart trick where you wait for the other person, but he's lost it. Uh, <laughs> Steve Bolger comes home seventh. Gary Neville eighth. Brock Harvey in ninth. Termo, a top 10. The enigmatic Wayne will finish in 11th, just a, well, ahead of Luke Joyner, who is a lap down. Uh, it is Cracker coming through the Victoria Park section to finish in 12th. Uh, Wayne Whitmore is a lap down even 13th. Darren also a lap down in 14th. Cam Rutledge uh, with help from uh, Will Devonish in 15th. Uh, Luke Joyner uh, has finished uh, two laps down in 16th and then we had mike coulston retire at the very end and then aaron adam Kerrings, kerrison brian walsh and glenn miles are the other retirements so yeah there's race one there's race one in radio um <laughs> sorry about sorry about that everybody um yeah that was yeah okay you you've got to commentate the entire second race by yourself because i've already lost my voice excellent yeah, you don't need the place. You're waving your place for the next four days. Uh, I might be on comms, though, is the problem. Ooh. So, yeah, yeah. Ap apologies again to everybody. You missed the cracking race one. If that's a taste of what we've got coming for us, it's going to be good. Uh, while we get try to get back into the lobby here so I can actually get some pictures up, which I think I might be able to. Please work, please work. Um, just for those watching on stream, I've actually got the uh, slideshow of the cars going across. Oh. And sorry, while those that slideshow is happening, we have the top three of the race in the booth with us. We'll start with Brenton Hobson. Brenton, more things change, the more they stay the same. Am I right? Yeah, that seems to be the case. Let's hope it stays that way. <laughs> uh, very comfortable race from you in the end. You had a bit of a battle with Damien Rasmussen in the beginning of the race. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, cracking race, actually. I... Um... I sort of nerfed it a little bit at the start and he got me down at turn three or whatever it was at the start of the race and sat behind him for a few laps and just sort of see what he was doing. He's pretty aggressive, it looked like, and I was just minding my tyres and eventually pushed a little hard and I managed to get by. So um, after that, just tried to hit my marks, do the usual thing and see whether or not I could pull a bit of a gap. I think they might have had some dramas with um, drive throughs behind me. So uh, I was just sort of making sure I didn't make any errors and I'm actually really happy with that race. That was a, for me, that was probably, a, I feel like a almost faultless drive. I didn't make any errors. So I was happy with that. Mm, looked very good. How does it feel to not have all that weight that you were penalized with at the end of last season? How does it feel to be back in a normal car? Oh, it's a breath of fresh air. I feel like I've got 7,000 horsepower and um, it feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, yeah. Unfortunately it won't last, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, again, the more things change, the more they stay the same. Uh, speaking of change, just quickly, the new cars all-wheel drive back to the sort of chassis from the first TCAC series. How do the all-wheel drive compare to the real drive of TC, uh, TCAC Retro and uh, the front-wheel drive of TCAC Season 1? 
Oh, yeah, it's, we're in the same car, um, Scotty and I in the Lanta, but obviously all-wheel drive instead of front-wheel drive. I mean, I, I enjoy them. I like um, underpowered cars. These things are a little – I feel like they're a little more juiced up than they were for season one. But, um, I mean, I'm everyone knows – everyone who knows me knows that I like huge power, under-tired, rear-wheel drive, out-of-control, hard-to-drive cars. So this isn't really up my alley, but um, I've, they, they actually feel really good. I mean, I did my, just done my first laps in them yesterday of and course first you time of course you bloody did <laughs> first time in ams since the last round of the retro series and of course you bloody I, did. um i jumped in and straight away i feel i feel like brock's done an awesome job with this particular mod so and although it's not my cup of tea this type of racing i, I straight away felt like the mod was actually really good and balanced I, I think that the retro cars weren't that balanced um okay. whereas these these feel really good straight out of the box i mean it'll change i'll be whinging in two weeks when it's too heavy but for the time being it feels pretty good <laughs> Fantastic. Congratulations on your race one victory. Uh, Chris, are you actually in the lobby this time? Nearly. Nearly, nearly. Okay. Uh, we'll go over then to the Synergy Sim Racing teammate, Scott Nolan. Uh, again, the more things change, the more they stay the same. How are you going to get on your level with your teammate and actually challenge for some wins? Uh, look, yeah, I definitely have the pace to match him. Um, I just had a rubbish qualifying because... I tried to abort the first lap and it wouldn't abort for me. So I had to I had to live with that time, which luckily enough was fifth, I think. So that was all right. And then at the start, I decided to split the two at the middle and it didn't, it worked out all right. I got ahead of him. Which one hit me either Devon Shore up or Brock, but um, someone just hit me and I had like, I had like 25 degree right hand down the rest of that race. So then uh, decided to truck, uh, cut some uh, corners and got a pit lane drive through and watched Damien spin out behind me and I was laughing pretty hard and that's what caused me to get the uh, drive through and then we both got one on the same lap, which even made me laugh even harder. So uh, yeah, anyway, it's pretty funny, but um, yeah, we'll be uh, we'll be looking. We got a straight car for this one, so we'll be looking to uh, be out the front again. Uh, random grid for this race, so uh, <laughs> fingers crossed you get up the top half of the grid, right? Oh, uh, yeah, look, you want to, there's actually a really good, it's great numbers, like 20, mm. 21, um, it's awesome to see, hopefully it sticks around, hopefully people, there's a few people that are probably a bit off the pace, hopefully that doesn't uh, discourage them, even though, um, you know, they're still good racing all the way down the grid, so once people get a handle, this is a rubbish, you know, pretty rough track for, um, rubbish, for, uh, you know, cut tracks and stuff to start, like, like not rubbish. a rubbish track, but a rough track for cut tracks and stuff like that, so, a lot of the guys that are getting used to the car and understeering and cutting the tracks probably a bit frustrating, but hopefully everyone sticks around. And man, if we're at the back, it'll be a lot of fun. But hopefully, uh, the other quick guys are at the back too. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It would be great to see you guys push through the field. Uh, how's the all wheel drive feel compared to the rear wheel drive of last season? Oh, uh, yeah. Look, the cars drove okay. Like, all right. The, you know, as Brenton said, the, the rear wheel drive Porsche was a little bit, um, Understeer, like a bit unbalanced, sorry, but um, but I the racing's better. You can actually rub and rub door panels in this one. I feel like that sort of collision mode in the other one was a little bit off, and okay. um, you know, so this one it's going to be you're going to see a lot more dive bombs, you're going to see a lot more uh, wheel to wheel rubbing because the cars allow you to do that, and it's going to go back to that sort of series before the retro where you know we were three or four wide and switching, you know, you can really rub Price someone and they don't six get wide too... into Interlagos. <laughs> yeah. yeah that people don't get to, um, you know, if someone gets nudged wide. It's not too much of a, uh, of a drama. I think the draft, I think this, there's no draft in these. I don't think so. Okay. I think that's probably the only thing that needs to be improved is, uh, allowed it to have a bit of a draft. So, um, you know, if the guys are, are a little bit off, they can keep up and yeah, be good racing. Fair enough. Congratulations on your second position, Scott. Thanks Scott. Okay, we have some fantastic news. Are you we on have the bitches! Server? Yay! We did it! We did it! Oh god, we can actually do this, we can actually do this justice now. And while we're while Chris is celebrating, I'll just have a quick chat to Damien. Damien, third in that race. Uh, great start for you, managing to get past uh, Brenton Hobson in that first stanza. Uh, how did he jump you through that pit sequence? Uh, he was already in front of me, and I think I just had a really bad in-lap. I uh, made okay. a few mistakes, and it just didn't really go as well. I didn't think I lost that much time, but obviously it was. And then yeah. after that, it yeah. just went downhill, and some cut tracks, and then a spin, and then another cut track, and a penalty. And it was, yeah, after that, it was 
I got the pace. It's just I need to minimize mistakes. Yeah, you were one of the high-profile names caught out by a lot of track cuts there. You had three penalties, two in one lap, and then one immediately out of the pits. Uh, so uh, I see that Will's actually up the the uh, curb hopping for this race. Uh, you're hoping to... Well, have you learnt your lesson? Uh, I want to hope so. If I can do the first 10 minutes for the next 35 minutes, like I did in the in the first race, I think we'll be all right. But um, depending where we start, which looks like I am last, um, hey. yeah, it should be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got a uh, random good for this race, so we'll quickly congratulate you and let you get ready. Uh, and we'll get some pictures finally. We will. Excellent. Uh, we're just waiting for the lobby to take over. I think they may have... Cheers, Damo. You right? Yep. <laughs> I was just I was just saying uh, goodbye to Damien. Oh, sorry, we, we mentioned that on stream. Um, we're just waiting for the lobby to take it over. I think they're going to reset it so he Damien may not be last. You'd hope so. Yeah. You'd hope so if you're a Rasmussen fan. Yeah. Um, there's some really awesome liveries as well. Like you got this Darren bloke and the Diet Coke Racing Beamer. God, that's got some history behind it. It's it's pretty white. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, and so, so that was the one I was mentioning yeah. uh, was a bit washed out. So it looks real cool, but it looks like there's it, it needs to be like three or four contrasts wh whiter. Uh, <laughs> sorry, darker. Okay. We... Okay. So random grid time. Let's see how we go. I'm Cam Rutgers and twelfth and a beautiful beamer. You hear that much? Let's move up to the front of the grid, and the winner is Scott Nolan, who'll be starting from pole. Hey! Congrats, but... Scott. And his, and his, <laughs> and his teammate in a second. Oh, <laughs> god damn it. Can we redraw? Can we redraw? Hobo, Where, where's lap, Will? Hobo, do a lap oh, I'm just going to jump into race chat quickly. I'll be back in a sec. <laughs> while, he asks, while Michael asks for a redraw, third place will be Brock Harvey. So you're not going to get a redraw with Michael. <laughs> Fourth place is Lime Mitch. Fifth will be Mike Colston in the Camel Racing Machine. Sixth will be William Devinish in the Devinush Honda 15. There's so much fun with that name. Seventh will be Luke Joyner in the number seven. Wayne will be in eighth. Brendan Ross in ninth place. Brian Walsh in tenth. God, there's so many cars. Cam Ridge in eleven. Do we have a rolling start or are we just going to go? Rolling start it is. Wayne Whitmore coming out of P12. Damien Rasmussen out of 13 in the Rasta Mouse Racing B Wee. Glenn Miles in 14th, Turmo out of 15 in the Gran Turismo machine, Adam Carrington in 16th, Steve Bolger out of 17th in the, I guess you'd call that the uh, Rising Sun livery, Cracker out of 18, Darren in the Diet Coke machine in 19, looks like we're going to have 19 starters for race 2. So who have we lost? Who have we lost? It may have been Adam, Adam Carius, no he's there. It may have been in fact Glenn Miles. I don't recall seeing his, calling his name out. Uh, he, no he was there. So we don't know who we've lost and that's rough because it's like the first race of the series. So let's have a look at these liveries. So the Synergy Sim Racing cars we've seen before so we, we know what they look like. Um, yeah. Harvey's tribute to Astra uh, in in third. Lion Mitch going full citrus. Um, I kind of missed the pink pan. Yeah. Lion Mitch has just hit the wall. Brilliant. Um, well done. Mike Coulson's camel car is very, very nice, I've got to say. Yeah, we've just quickly just got Will Devonish in the pit lane. Uh, so he's not joined the grid. And, you're and Brendan Ross. So, we've interesting. Had a and we've got a reset. Okay. So, yeah. we must have had someone drop. I think your internet almost dropped too. You're turning into a Dalek then. Oh, was that what it was happening? I was getting the same from you. So, I think it's your fault. So, suck it. Well, my NBN so internet Darren connection. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to have a new grid. New grid. re racking boys. Yep. So... While we've got this extra little bit of time, we can actually talk a little bit more about this series. Uh, so Brock, seeing as we have you here, tell us about this series. You were the one who built the mod or part of the team that built the mod, right? Oh, a team of one. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, basically, I, um, I really it's the base Lancer R physics 
from Automobilista with a couple of little changes um, to make them a little bit more AMS Oz centric as looks like the guys just got into the game. We were missing Darren and Gary. They got the ah, there we go. Steam was having some issues. So. Um, but yeah, so all fun. I've painted half of them as well. So every time you guys are mentioning Levery, I'm like, yeah, I painted that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what is the difference in physics? So it's, it's the stock Lancer physics, um, and is it the same power as what we had in Season 1, or has that changed? A little bit less, so I don't know what Hobbo's on about. But, um, <laughs> yeah, she's uh, probably about 70 horsepower less than what we had. So um, all the cars are turbocharged now. Ah, beautiful. Cool, cool. Yeah. As we have the grid setting up for... The re re race. Yeah, and the re rack has put Gary Neville on pole now. Oh, beauty. Second yeah, place is still Hobo. Is, um, Scotty. <laughs> Scott. I do need to apologise to Scott Nolan as well. That was me that hit him. I'm um, just out of practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were conspicuously quiet while we were interviewing him, and then now when he's gone, you're like, oh, by the way, that was me. So yeah, Scott, that was me. So Scott Nolan's back down in seventh now. Hey, I've and... gone from third to eighth. I was looking alright there. Yeah. Um, and Hobbo's still second, of yeah, course. Of course. And we've got Brendan Ross just off the side for some reason. He's pulled out of his grid slot. Yep. There he goes. Hey, if you get a chance, get a real good close-up at the back of uh, Lime Mitch's car. Get in there. Like, good chances any to do that on the warm-up lap. Of course he's in fifth place. There we go. So let's see if I can do this on the first try. Yes, I can. Oh, 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 come on. What is that? <laughs> what did you do? Let's just say there's a Let me guess, the same thing as my car. Uh, also, I just like you, you guys, you know, uh, Chris, uh, we're still on the uh, slideshow on the stream. Yeah, I know. Okay, so you want um, to show that you want to show what you, you what you found in the stream? Let, let's let's not. It's actually <laughs> on a few cars. It's also on Wayne's car as well. It, it's also on my car, which is why I need to get my livery done. <laughs> is that, is that? Okay. Um, is that the livery creator's way of saying do your own dang livery? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Good call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, have a good race. Okay. So, we'll go through the grid yet again. Um, this time it is Gary Neville in the GNEV Racing Subaru on pole position. Second place, as we have already joked about, is the Synergy Sim Racing car of Brendan Hobson once again. Uh, third is Termo, the Termo and Cracker Racing number 51 Subaru. Uh, fourth will be Wayne Whitmore in the Camel number four car, the Volkswagen. So he's partnered uh, teammates with Mike Coulston. Uh, Lion Mitch is in the Citrus Mitch. Behind him is Will Devonish. We're probably going to salute dive bombs again from Devonish if he follows the same. He's in the De Devinush. Um, Scott Nolan is out of seventh in the second of the sim Synergy Sim Racing Lancers. Then it is Brock Harvey in the MHRT Holden number 29. Thanks for the flashing, uh, Brock. Blue lights. <laughs> They're pretty foolish. It's yeah. foolish. I like it. Um, Wayne, the enigmatic Wayne, is in the rapid response net racing number 10 Mazda. Um, Mike Coulston in the second of the Camel Cars, the Camel Golf Cars, is in 10th. And it is Adam Kerrison in the FS Motorsport number 78 Lancer. Beautiful, uh, Erwin Lake livery, um, on that car. I've just realized why you're going to keep saying Adam Kerrigan. <laughs> Who's, uh, why is that? That's, that's, um, the castle, isn't it? I don't know. I have uh, Glenn Miles is in the Terminal Cracker Racing number 69 car. Nice. Um, as opposed to his old Playboy livery. Uh, it is Brian Walsh in the FS Motorsport number 27 Lancer. So he's made it back into the game. Steve Bolger is in the Gravel Rush rating, Racing number 87 Subaru, which uh, Kiwi called the uh, Rising Sun livery on the top. Cracker is in the grey Terminal Cracker Racing Subaru. Um, that is Brendan Ross in the FCR, that grey uh, Golf, number 444. And it is Darren in that bright white BMW. Luke Joyner in the MHRT Astra DS DSF number 7. Uh, Cam Rutledge in that beautiful livery, uh, Cam Rutledge electrical BMW. And then rounding out the top 20 and also the grid, Damien Rasmussen in the Rasta Mouse Racing V uh Golf there. So, bad luck for Rasmussen starting out of 20th, but it's going to be great to see him come through the field as the, on the main straight of the Adelaide Street. As we see the cars lining up now, as Flood's voice goes dark again, we're moments out from the start. A few cars pointing out of grid spot, so expecting an aggressive start from the German flag P1. 
car there of Will Devinish. The Devinish Honda. We'll wait for the start. And we're away. Pretty good start out front by Hobbo as we expect. And Termo with a stonking start as well. Straight up to second. Contact between the Citrus car of Lime Mitch. As we all filter in. Oh, we have an incident. Big accident there. Massive accident. Oh, and it looks like that's Gary. And it's still going. It's still going. Caused and spin spun in the middle. And they all... But somehow they were the only two big ones to go down as there's more action as they head down Wakefield Street into and everyone else seems to have made it out okay so not sure what happened to Neville there I'll have a quick scroll back while Kiwi calls what's happening around the corner as we're still going in two by two and we have now the Preston Hire engineering car at the back of the Lancer of Adam Kerrison without its front front hood as opposed to its back hood. And he's down in 18th. He took a hit on the outside wall there of what would be turn five. And his car's definitely broken. He just hit the shell sign at the fast chicane. He won't be going too much further, I suspect, in this race. So it looked like it was actually Scott Nolan who made contact with Neville in the braking zone, um, which was the reason for Neville spearing across the track into the turn one wall. So not a great start from Nolan in the Synergy Sim Racing number. Oh, what car number is he in? Who cares? It's that Lancer. <laughs> Checking out, got a good battle here for second between Termo and Lime Mitch as Hobbo checks out in front, as you would expect he would do now. Uh, coming into the Victoria Park section, Lime Mitch right on the back of Termo. Can he stick it in the inside coming to the final hairpin? Not this time around, but with 33 minutes to go, still plenty of opportunities to do so. Good exit on oh, that corner from Termo as well, so that should see them cross the line with Brenton Hobson in first, Termo second, Lime Mitch third. Wayne Whitmore has had a decent start up to fourth, Will Devinish in fifth. And Scotty Nolan should be across the six. As Turmo takes a lot of curb at turn one, that might catch a bit of a curb strike. Um, we've also got Damien Rasmussen, the first of the pit callers uh, for this race. So he's decided to pit and get out of the aggro stuff a bit early on as the field files through the S's. There's a big battle pack from fourth down there. And they're going Ooh. side by side in turn one. It looked like that was... Uh, was that cool? Oh no, Wayne Whitmore and Will Devinish. And it's still going on. Nolan dives down the inside as well. He makes contact with Whitmore while behind them, Ross and Wayne are going at it. And they're gonna file, uh, try to find a way to go single file through the fast S's. They all sort it out finally, but they're gonna go up towards uh, Rundle Street. And it looks like Whitmore is having, uh, having a dive there. No, that was Nolan on Whitmore as they go down the back straight. Whitmore's been forced out. Ross is now on the inside of Whitmore and it looks like Wayne's also trying to get on the inside of Whitmore and Whitmore's just gonna, he's just gonna get monstered here. He manages to file back in line just between uh, Ross and Wayne as they head down the back straight into the hairpin. What was that, three positions and three corners? About that, yeah, it was not a good time. And Brock Harvey's actually getting pushed by Luke Joyner just a bit further back. So they're actually in the old bump strafe down the back straight. As we see now, actually we'll go back to that battle because we see Steve Bolger. Is that a Racing Sun livery? I'm not quite sure. It's on the top. Yeah. Uh, I'll count it. Yeah, you count it. Yeah. Just, and we go back now to Brock Harvey with Luke Joyner and Cracker as well joining into the Make the Three Car Gravy Train. We'll call it a kerfuffle because that's what it is. It is. Uh, we've actually lost Gary Neville, so he's yeah. he's jumped out of the race. He was. He was. Yeah. From the oh, Brock Harvey's lost it into the last corner. Too much curb on entry. And has spun it. Harmless spin in the end, but drops two positions. He did that in well. the last race as well. So he's he hasn't learned his lesson, Brock. Haven't learned your lesson. Get get your get your head in the game, mate. Come on, mate. You're not even the best Brock in the Holden race car ever. Oof. Get cut. Ooh, oh, we have no, a, no, no. we have another spin here. Cracker has found the inside wall at the S's. He's found the inside wall. Yeah. Oh, well, the outside wall, I guess, by the point of by the exit, and his car is done. We've actually got Wayne Whitmore who's stopped as well on the exit of turn four. And there's another crash. I heard a big bang there and it was... Was that Luke Joyner? Yeah, it was Luke Joyner. Oh, Luke He's Joyner. gone into the wall at turn four. No, there was a crash further back. So he was actually involved in something with Termo, yeah. I think it was. Termo or Cracker? It was Cracker. So he in the field here. Luke Joyner, where is he at? 14. So I think... So Cracker ended up on the inside of the center chicane and it was because 
he got tagged by Luke Joyner. They tried to go side by side into the first corner. Cracker went a little deeper and had the racing line and Joyner's just tapped him and mm. spun him around. It was very much like Jason Bright's big incident back in 2016 where he pirouetted off the tire barrier there. Um, and Whitmore, Whitmore's actually just stopped, come to a stop. So I don't know what's happened to Wayne Whitmore. Um, Kerrison has got no bonnet. Neville's dead, not dead. He's just in the pits, um, retired. And yeah, this is this is a bit of a mess. But it looks like the front half of the field has kind of sorted itself out a bit. Oh, as we've got you a slide from Nolan into... Uh, and Ross is... Ross, so, uh, let's just recap that. Nolan slid into the final corner. Ross tried to make the move, outbreak himself, and in the end, it was Will Devonish who ended up making the position on uh, Brendan Ross. Brendan Ross, rather. Yeah, that was um, a little bit messy to come through the centre. It is now very squirrely by both cars. A whole lot of curb by Brendan Ross, and on exit as well. So this is this is where the biggest intrigue is at the moment. Just ahead of this battle is Lime, Mitch, and Termo, but they're kind of uh, playing follow the leader at the minute. Just behind this battle is uh, Steve Bolger and the enigmatic Wayne, um, and they are also playing a little bit of follow the leader, but it is also the S's, so you can't really do much else. And then there's a fair gap back to Cam Rutledge, who's found his way up 10 positions into ninth. Uh, and then behind him, he has Darren and Mike Coulston. Um, Luke Joyner has exited the pits in 12th position. And then Damon Rasmussen is just on the tail of Glenn Miles through the S's. Um, wait, so, Joyner, Joyner must have gone... No, it was the other MHRT car that went through the pits. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that makes a bit more sense. Yeah. So we're already three DNS into this race, and we're, what, seven minutes in. It's been carnage um, early on. It has been carnage. And Ross and Devonish are going to rejig their battle from last race. Because mm -hmm. Ross is right on the tail of Devonish, heading into the hairpin. He could have had a dive there. I don't know why he didn't. And Devonish has actually run a little deep into that corner, which opens the door a little bit. Ross wasn't really there to take advantage, so a bit of a weird, weird little mess there. Maybe, maybe Ross didn't want to make the move. I don't know why you wouldn't at this stage of the race. No, um, racing car drivers like any gap that opens here. Yeah, I would have thought. Um, and we've lost Mike Coulston, unfortunately. I don't know what's happened there, but Coulston has dropped down the field. Um, I am just going to try and. F oh, he's had an incident. He's had a big incident he on the incident. exit of turn or turn eight or no hang on the the turn onto the back straight oh yeah so what's happened here I've he's just, I've actually just come to see a tire flying away from the car that's never good yeah he so darren ahead of him got a little was a little slow out of the corner and mm. so mike's just come onto the curb with nowhere to go tag darren and he's just fired himself into the wall so unlucky for the saudi camel um but he'll he'll definitely be back he loves this sort of stuff indeed and it doesn't matter how fast or slow you are, you can just have a race, right? Exactly. Mike's one of the cool guys in the paddock, and I say cool is mm. in like chill, is in laid back, and is in fun. Not necessarily. I don't think he's actually like James Dean cool. No, I don't he, think anyone he's not the sort of cool Dean you take cool. your mother and say, "Hey, look who I'm dating." You'd take a guy to your mother and say, "Hey, um, look who I'm dating." Not with my girlfriend watching the stream, I want. <laughs> Anyway, Sorry. eight seconds out at front to Brendan Hobson's lead now. He it's, the pace is a lot slower than last race. So last race, the, the fastest lap was a 146. This time, Brendan Hobson's fastest lap, which is the fastest lap for race, is a 148 flat. More fuel? It was a 46.9, but it's about a second. More fuel, though? Yeah, it could be. It could definitely be more fuel. Back to oh, the... Uh, we didn't that make that much of a difference in the last TCAC, yeah, so... True. Back to the line, Mitch in the Citrus, Citrus Mitch Penis Mobile. Based on what Brock Harvey's put on the back of that damn thing. Uh, and if you, and for those who are just joining TCAC, that's the kind of humour that goes on in this series. No one takes anyone, anyone or themselves, especially themselves, too no, seriously. We don't take ourselves seriously in commentary. Oh, quite obviously not. Yeah, no. Got to say though, is line Mitch has a beautiful line through the S's. These Gran Turismo cars. They're simple, but they're pretty iconic. Also, I yeah, they're advertising Gran Turismo in a non-Gran Turismo game. Yeah, they're, they're pretty nice looking cars. It just kind of shows that you don't need something 
massively complex or flashy to just look good. And I think the the sort of the gradient they've got going where they've got, uh, I think it's Termo in the black car, Cracker in the gray car, and then Glenn Miles in the white car as Rutherson makes a, another move to jump into 10th now on Luke Joyner. So he's progressing through the field. Um, yeah, it just, it just very, very nice uh, continuity um, with different liveries, which I quite like. Indeed. Uh, I've gone back to Brenton Ross here because he's right back on the uh, Honda of Will Devonish. I'm actually just going to draw your attention one position further up uh, to Termo, who's just lost that position to uh, to Scott Nolan. He actually ran wide Ooh. at turn nine there on the run onto the back straight, and that was enough for Nolan to make that count. Of course, then, of course yeah, the action happens, happens when I'm not paying attention to the battle. He's just, got, he's just got to know the right battles to look at. He's yeah. got to have that, that, that game sense, that race sense, that broadcast sense, Kiwi. At the moment, I'm trying to get the broadcast to stop killing itself. Speaking of broadcast sense, head back to Damon Rasmussen in 10th, who is right on the tail of Cam Rutledge as they head down the back straight. And in fact, he's got the high ground already. And he's just going to breeze past the BMW uh, of the Cam Rutledge Engineering, or Electrical rather. Uh, car. So, another position for Damien Rasmussen. Um, had he not started from last, he would probably be challenging Brendan Hobson. <laughs> oh, it's good for him to come from last. <laughs> probably not win Hobbs in second. At least this series does have a drop round. Is that confirmed? Uh, I don't know. Brock, does it have a drop round? He's probably too busy racing. I love bothering Brock while he's driving. <laughs> Be a damning Rasmussen in the Rasta Mouse machine, which looks good, but not your traditional racing livery. It's very, it's very, very flashy. Or well, not? It's not even very flashy. It's just very loud. It's just yeah. loud colours. It's more Lamborghini style. Yeah, <laughs> if Lamborghini painted Volkswagens mm. and did a bad job of it, what? <laughs> but hey, everyone's allowed to paint their own car, right? Yeah, this is true. Uh, Rasmussen has a 21 second deficit to the next car up the field, which is the Enigmatic Wayne, mm -hmm. um, who we've not met yet. Uh, so, and then he starts to get involved in the battles between the, bat the, the battle packs towards the head of the field. So a bit of a gap for him to get, uh, to get up there, but he, he could very well get up there. He is, uh, has proven to be quite quick in both TCAC Retro and the modern TCAC all-wheel drive. Yeah, and well, we've got a yellow flag at turn nine. Turn nine? Okay, well, I'm just water with Luke. Luke jo oh, Lime oh, Mitch is out. Nine. Lime Mitch is out. Oh, he oh hit... wow. That, he must have... What's he done? Whoops. What has Lime Mitch done to deserve this? Coming down the back straight, he's... He was... Whatever oh, he's pulled the off. Line. Yeah, he's just pulled off. So that, that, sound, that looks like an IRL thing for Lime Mitch, because he just coasted to the end of turn well not turn nine the hairpin and just that was it dang that's a shame well what i was about to do before all that kicked off was okay i was going to jump on board for a lap um we could jump on board for a lap you want to do let's that? do it let's do it okay uh, our, our victim will be what the enigmatic wayne coming into the center is now so we're on board with wayne nice amount of curb through turns one and two and then this run down onto Wakefield Street into turn four. It's actually surprisingly uphill here and very, very bumpy um, as we go through the S's Christian Brothers College just on the left there and then into turn five. One of the few spots in this track with actual gravel to catch you if you go off. Um, and we're still on East Terrace and we go over the curve at turn six. So the modern circuit dinks to the right here down, I, I, think, it's, I think it's Bartels Road. I think that's Bartels Road. But this one, the old days, we went through the fast S's down, continued down our uh, East Terrace in front of the fruit and, old fruit and veg markets and then on to Rundle Road. Now, the older circuit had the long and short straight switched around. So we're coming down this short straight here with this big curb on the inside, which Wayne nicked very nicely. And now we are on Decatable Terrace. <clears throat> so this is the run, the fastest section of the track, and this will take us into the hardest stop on the track as well on the modern circuit it is still the hardest circle uh, stopping on the track it's on turn nine in the modern circuit i think it's turn 12 on this iteration very nicely done by wayne just nicks the curve on the inside there and then uses that little bridge to take us back down wakefield street and then off onto victoria park this 90 degree left hander here is actually very very difficult with that wall in the modern day right up against the curb there 
as we swish through the left-hander into this double, kind of double apex hairpin. So the braking zone for the final corner is actually that little kink there, which makes the braking zone very, very difficult as Steve Bolger demonstrates ahead of us with a little lockup. Around that final corner, across the main straight, with the fans on the left, the pit building on the right, and that is the Adelaide Street Circuit back in the F1 days. That's a pretty cool lap track layout. I've heard people saying we should go back to the V8s. It's impossible to do that, isn't it? Um, it's not impossible. There's not. There's no reason that it would be impossible. Like, there's nothing that's been built there, like a tram line in the Gold Coast, to make it impossible. It's just probably not economically viable mm -hmm. uh like at the moment uh the that section of adelaide while having the street circuit built on the mid east part of it in the northeast like just where rundle street is that's actually the fringe festival which is the second largest fringe festival in the world so it's got like the whole sort of like not locked out area but it's just like got temporary stages food areas performance areas Gosh, that gonna, sort of stuff i'm going to interrupt you because there's just a cracking battle on screen between turmo will devonish and mr ross they're seeing turmo dive to the inside coming down the back straight and he's actually going to make the move done get the move done into the hairpin with a bit of with a lot of rubbing from Bryn ross as well wasn't Turmo actually ahead of uh, Devonish? They actually go side by side through that dink onto the Victoria Park section, and Devonish takes a lot of curb there, and they're still going to go side by side as they head onto the permanent circuit. Yeah, Devonish was ahead, and he's gone back ahead now, so while we're on the onboard lap, that happened. But this is getting very tasty. Oh! Ooh, it happened again! It's happened again to Will Devonish! And they all go off! Uh, Devonish is going to get the position from uh, Turmo, who's just waited for him. Well, let's put paid to that battle. That was, oh, that was just unfortunate. It happened again. I'm going to bring it up the replay of that and see if we can get on board with Turmo to see what it looks like from his view. So we're driving, driving in Turmo's helmet. He's, yep. Devonish has just broken nice and early, and uh, Turmo hasn't reacted. It's oh, it's just one of those things. Mm. And yeah, oh, that's just, that's just bad luck. Yeah. That's bad positioning from Will Devonish. It's happened, it's happened again. <laughs> but that's a bit mean. That's a bit mean. I wouldn't, I shouldn't, shouldn't say that. That's, uh, I'm sorry, Will, please forgive me. <laughs> but what it has been is it's given Brendan Ross a pretty, sh pretty clear bit of air behind him to third place. And tell you what, he's coming up on oh, no, some of that traffic. Don't mind me. Um, he has a six second deficit to Scott Nolan yeah. ahead of him. Yeah, I um, thought that was, I got excited there. You did. You did get a little excited. Um, I now, Steve. <laughs> oh, look! It's, it's, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. Oh, uh, could you look at that? <laughs> That's a monster. No. <laughs> um, so now, with that all sorted out, it is uh, Brennan Hobson out the front. I don't even know if he's taking his pit stop. We have not even seen him. Uh, Scott Nolan in second place. Then it is Brendan Ross in third. Will Devonish is in fourth. He's got three seconds ahead and three seconds behind. And then it's now a battle for fifth between the two Subarus of Termo and Steve Bolger. Uh, and then it is Damian Rasmussen in seventh. He's still got 19 seconds to gain on to get into the battle for fifth. So he's not quite managed to, to reel that in as quickly as he would have liked. Um, and we've got a few pitters in the lane. Darren and Glenn Miles are in the pit. Okay. Um, and then uh, it is uh, Brian Walsh... Uh, out on track and then we've got the the graveyard so to speak um like mitch mike coulston wayne whitmore cracker and gary neville we've got a few more pit stoppers that i'm just going to try and find um both termo and steve bolger are in the pits at the moment so this is the battle for fifth um that's in the pits and rasmussen's might even round them both up i gotta keep an eye on this so bolger rasmussen's on the on the track now yes he's going to come out in fifth ahead of the bonnetless Glenn uh, Miles, Miles, that is. And, yep. and Bolger jumps Turmo in the pits. 2v4 tires, I'm guessing. Maybe. It's not that much. It's only It was only about a second, so that might just be fuel. Ooh. And... Ooh. Ooh! Penalty for third place. Brendan Ross, that must be a track cut um, because I don't see any other reason why that would have happened. Mm. And let's scroll through and see if we can find it. Yes, he took way too much curve in the fast S's and that might have been it. Okay, that might have been the reason why. He took, he's, he's taken a lot of curve on the approach to it as well. What's he done? So, 
Oh yeah. Oh yeah, no. No. Can't Ooh, do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um so this all of a sudden plays Rasmussen into an even better position because if um Ross has to take a penalty as well as his pit stop, that 24 second gap between himself and Will Devonish, the 20 second uh, 27 seconds between him and Ross, that's just going to disappear. So Rasmussen might have actually played an absolute masterstroke by pitting on the first lap, then doing the old hobo strategy. And speaking of the old hobo strategy, he is in the pits. He is. Uh, he's dropped down to second. Me giving his teammate a bit of sunshine in the lead, which won't last for long. Hobo and is gonna he's gonna jump drop out just behind Brendan Ross, who still has that penalty. And then Will Devonish is actually in the pits as well. So this will be actually very interesting as well to see whether or not Devonish stays out ahead of Rasmussen, oh, who's Rasmussen. coming around the last corner now. Just keeping an eye on the rest of Mouse Machine. Devonish is on the move. It's going to be close. It's going to be super close. Devonish is there. Right there. Got him. Oh, just on exit on pit lane. Very just. In fact, Rasmussen had a poor run through the center chicane. And it's going to be it's going to be tight. No, he's got a little bit more room heading into turn four. There's actually a yellow flag in that section of the track as well. It looked like one of the um, one of the black and yellow uh, lan uh, lancers. It is Brian Walsh who's just stopped opposite pit exit, and Wayne's been given a drive through penalty. So that's from ninth position. Mm -hmm. Whereabouts is he on track? Eighth position. He's just come through the fast exits. I think. Or the, or the, or the, uh, yeah, and it's a yeah. curb hop on the exit of the center chicane, so we use too much curb yeah. on exit. Oh. Should it, yeah, we still got 30, we still got 13 minutes left as well, so it, those getting penalties now have chewed through their four track cuts or uh, track limit violations. That's really going to leave him on tender hooks. We see it in V8 all the time. No, that goes through. Oh, we got a battle here for fourth. I'm going to interrupt you. Battle for okay. fourth. Rasmussen covering. Devonish trying to squeeze through into the hairpin. They make a little bit of contact, it looks like, but Devonish has to squeeze out. Rasmussen maintains that position. We should keep eyes on this mm -hmm. the next little bit. So this is where the action's going to be. I've got eyes on there as Rasmussen runs wide, coming through the hard 90 degree left you talked about. Devonish is going to try. Oh, in the kink. No, you can't stick it too wide there. And oh no, Rasmussen's got it on the curb to break and he slid away. Oh no, he's he's given it away. He's done the Brock Harvey. He just started to break on the curb and the car tipped over it and slid to the left. So that and that was all she wrote. So that cedes the position to Will I'm, Devonish. I'm jumping on board with Will Devonish here. I don't think he was entirely blameless in this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, look, so he's Jim, yeah. All four wheels on the grass of the kink, and I reckon he just gave him a slight tap on the exit of the kink into the hairpin. So I reckon there could be more to tell there. Ooh, it's very, very close. Mm. Um, I, I'm not. I'm glad I'm not part of the judiciary for this series. Yeah. Um, does this series even have a judiciary? I haven't seen a penalty given in this series at all. <laughs> um. Meanwhile, according to YouTube chat, Lime Mitch's car went boom. Ah, uh, okay, that would explain it. Yeah. Um, in fact, just quickly, did you know that uh, the um, if you quit back into the lobby, it actually shows you uh, retirement details. Um, I'm not doing so that. If you can do that for me, that'd be great. <laughs> I, I can. So just to, just to dot the I's and cross the T's, uh, both Cracker and Gary Neville had suspension problems, which caused their retirement. Uh, Wayne Whitmore blew his engine, as did Lime Mitch and Brian Walsh. So that's why we saw Brian Walsh uh, stranded on the main straight. <laughs> Sorry, while you're talking about that, Brendan Ross just did the whole Craig Leon sideways entry into the pit lane. Uh, so this should have been his drive through penalty, but he's taking a pit stop instead. Yeah. So and while that's happened, Brendan Ross is, uh, sorry, Brenton Hobson, the other Brenton, has uh, set a new fastest lap of 48 flat. Basically flat, like flatter than a pancake. Nice. As we see, Rasmussen very, very, very close to losing it again, coming to the last corner, uh, just ahead of the Honda of Will Devonish again. And oh, so has that position been given back? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure if it's given back or taken back, but either way. And behind them, you've got the Subaru 
battle between Steve Bolger and Turmo chucks it in and thinks better of it on the X of the S's but he's got a decent run here coming into turn four he's gonna have a sniff down the inside but can't get it done this time around and now follow the leader for the next few corners um, so to round, uh, again, drop the I's and cross the T's. The position was given back by Will Devonish. Um, okay. So apparent, uh, your assessment may have been absolutely correct. Um, we have also had Scott Nolan in the pit. So now it is Brenton Hobson leading the race and setting purple sectors as he does so. Um, and now we've got a revitalized battle for third with Brendan Ross, who still should have a drive through penalty. Oh, Termo has, sorry to interrupt. Termo has just spun it coming Ooh. out of the fast S's. Uh, made slight contact with the inside wall. No real damage done apart from the loss of trip position behind Bulger now. And it was because he just got too much curb. With with the fast S's, you kind of need to have no curb or He's... The, overdo the curb. He's oh, almost done it again coming up. Yeah. He, he might have a car issue. He's definitely waving it side to side to see what's going on there. And while that's been happening, Brendan Hobson is the first to dip into the sevens of. 7-4 to really assert his dominance on the field. Of course he is. Classic Hobbo. Can we just start Hobbo at like plus 50 kilos? I feel like that would be more fair instead of waiting for him to win the first four <laughs> rounds and then give him, and then let him accumulate that, that weight. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm going back to the to the Rasmus and Devonish battle because he's side by side coming down the stone straight. No, actually, the Honda has got the job done coming in the last corner. This is going to be a very intriguing battle between the two. Um, remember, Rasmussen pit on the first lap of the race. So, as, as far as tyres go, if there is any sort of tyre wear, any sort of tyre cliff, he's going to be the first one to breach it. Um, they're coming up onto some lap traffic. I think that is Glenn Miles just ahead of them? Or is that Darren? It is, in fact, Darren in that Diet Coke uh, uh, BMW who has very much decided to just jump out of the way of Brendan Ross. Now, can the rest yep. of the guys... Yes, he's done a very good job of just moving out of the way and letting that battle pass him by. Not yet, he hasn't. But catching him with the fast S's is not ideal for <laughs> Devonish. No, it's not. There he goes. Good work, Darren. And Rasmussen as well. Probably hadn't quite, quite the luck of it, but gets it done now. Tell you what, though. Devonish had... Whoa, Devonish had... Whoa! <laughs> Well, that was Ooh. as close as you can get to an accident without actually having one. That was, as they say in the business, almost an airplane crash. Yes. <clears throat> How definitely held on to that, I have no idea. What it has done is make this battle a bit of a stretch out at the moment. There's Hobo goes and faster again. Hobo just doing what he does best, setting yeah. faster flaps. Um, that, that's just the classic all-wheel drive. I'm just going to stick my foot in it and hope for the best. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All done that. I was doing that all last night. Which doesn't really work at Suzuka, but anyway. I don't think any recovery works at Suzuka. I think once you once you get a, make a mistake at Suzuka, it's just like, well, I'm crashing now. <laughs> I'm crashing at Suzuka. So which gravel trap and wall do I hit next? Um, fun fact, Oliver Jarvis uh, at the Bathurst 12 hour, who had his brakes fail into the chat, basically said that <laughs> to me um, <laughs> when, uh, when I asked him about it. He was like, well, the brakes failed, so I tried to turn it into the gravel trap to wash as much speed off as I could, but I missed. <laughs> I was, it was too late. Because uh, he, he just missed the gravel track on the left side of the chase, mm -hmm. so he actually went over the grass, and then because there's that hump there, he got air over the track, and then at that point, he's just a passenger. So he actually yeah, yeah. tried to crash into the gravel and just missed because he was too late. <laughs> Which is easy to do when you're doing 290. Yeah, and the brakes fail. Yeah. Oh, if you mean to ask you, and I'll ask you on stream, because why not? Did they have the 962s there? Uh, no, they did not, oh. unfortunately. Um, I actually saw literally zero of any action that wasn't the GT3 competition, because I was working too hard. I wanted to see if they gave it full beans, as Brenton Ross almost chucks it sideways and backwards, coming through the fast kink onto the back straight. So I'm not sure if his drive-through has been cleared by the server or something because he's he's not taking it. Um, he's been disqualified. No, he hasn't. Wayne's been disqualified. Ooh, why has Wayne been disqualified? Did he did he have a drive-through he didn't take? Maybe, possibly, actually. 
potentially yes he did because he had the the um the drive through for using too much of the exit mm. of the center chicane so has wayne has a wayne's done the guy smith ignore the black flags and that was all she wrote possibly which means that why hasn't the same happened to ross unless the servers cleared him um like i don't know why it's happened unless it's thought his pit stop was the penalty hmm. loopholes for the win we pondered that and to see if there's any close battles on track at the moment it doesn't appear to be any unfortunately as we have four um, minutes 45 left on track yeah everyone's sort of just kind of spread out and found their own little little home adelaide is a bit of a circuit like that unless mm. unless you're really really on top of someone it's hard to sort of maintain um that pace as rasmussen he, he, you can see he's starting to lose a little bit of it because he's lost a second and a half to uh will devonish now um on that sector actually basically mm. that, that'd be, that would be the first lap tires for sure yeah exactly um, so we're at 17 laps now. We should, with four and a half minutes, uh, four minutes rather, hit another three. So it'll be uh, another four, actually. We might even hit 21 laps. No, we couldn't. We could. Because because no. because it will be four and a half laps from this point. <laughs> it'll because no because what will happen is Brendan uh, Brendan Hobson. He's just going to cross the line now. Mm. In another two minutes, he will start lap 19, and then he'll finish that lap and the time will expire on that lap and then it'll be another lap so it'll be 20 laps yeah and that is mess with michael da -da 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 -da. hey i know I, I think i know what i'm doing <laughs> i have a degree that tells people that i know what i'm doing uh, i want to focus on these lances because the furniture city i call them the um prison hire this sort of space on but yeah they look really nice they do it's just a nice combination of colors as i think we've just got uh, the second man into the 40. Oh, Scott Nolan's gone wide in the center chicane and he's going to hit the wall. And he's had a drive through at the same time. <laughs> oh, oh, a oh. calamity of errors for Scott Nolan uh, as he goes through the center chicane. He was lucky not to make heavier contact with the wall, but it was a mistake into the center chicane. He just took too much curb on the inside, which fired him uh, driver's left. He was lucky to miss the wall there, but used too much curb on exit. And that was a all she wrote. Um, so no one's going to have to take a penalty. In the meantime, we've also got a penalty coming through for, I think, Darren. Uh, was that on the screen? It was. So we'll have another, another person through the pits. Mm -hmm. um, rough rough uh, baptism of fire, as they say, for the third series of TCAC. Indeed. What it does mean is Brendan Ross will jump up the second. It means we have a new name to interview. Provided that the penalty was cleared and not given, I just, I don't know. I might have to ask him about that. His response is, hmm, interesting, interesting. Also, what I know is that when the truck car's gone the back straight, everything turns to crap on the internet in. But I don't know why that is. Weird, because anyway. you have you have actual internet now, not just like yeah shit to you i wonder, I wonder if, if my computer is going what is this ah there's so many bits i can't process them <laughs> yeah. um as nolan comes in to serve his penalty see where that head dropped him out to pit lane here we we talk about it a bit but the pit lane here is ridiculously tight yeah it is um uh, and the reason for that is as darren gets another drive through penalty um because it's all temporary none of those pit buildings actually exist um for more than a week yeah Oh, well, they do for more than a week, a but like, weeks. yeah. Um, so because it's all temporary and uh, it's all it's all very cramped, and that that hairpin into the pit lane, we've seen very famous incidents of drivers hitting the wall on the inside. And when you're marshalling in that little pocket, you have to be very very careful mm. to not be in the firing line when a drive when a car is coming in. Indeed. Uh, with time counting down, we'll go to Hobo to see if where he's at on track he's coming through now turn nine so it should be two laps from two laps more from this point yes so he'll cross the line to start lap 20 and then it'll be an additional lap after that see i told you it would be 21 laps that makes sense go on hobo do a donut just make things interesting <laughs> why 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 do you question me because that's what i get paid to do you don't get paid true 
Are they paying us? <laughs> Wait, are they paying you? Yeah. Pack of what? What? Yeah. I should be getting paid for this. Yeah. I should be paying you for this. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> I'll take that. Yes. Um, so, Brendan Ross, second place at the moment. Only 37 seconds back. Have you seen much of him race before? Yes, I've seen him race in Lewis Wedding's uh, TCR series or TCR Analog series, um, along with FCR Motorsport, uh, which are basically the big guns. They were racing the Volvo S60 and were just winning every single weekend. Um, he also races in GT3 for AMS Oz, uh, racing in the Viper, I believe, alongside, it was Brenton Ross and then Lewis Wedding was racing in the G Nissan GTR. So it was at the head of that series as well. And I also think he races next to, mm, who was it? Um, last season's ASC Super, oh, sorry, not ASC Super 2, AMS Oz Super 2 champion um, was his teammate, which Ooh. maybe he was his. Sorry to interrupt, but Brock Harvey had a lunch from seven postcodes back on Turmo for seventh place. Didn't quite get it done. I think he sent that. I think he sent that but from Taylor Bend. <laughs> um, and for those who don't know, Taylor Bend is about ninety minutes away from where this track is. I know that now. You've been there, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. Yes. But yeah, um, that was that was optimistic in the extreme, and that's not gonna. <laughs> yeah, what well up, Brock? Good work, Brock. Um, so long the short of it, Brandon Ross is that going to be at the top of any series that he races? Oh, perfect. As we see Hobbo now coming around the last corner to start what will be the last lap of the evening. He does it again. He's just super smooth. He, he just knows how to just get the most out of these little pocket rockets, I guess you call them. Hmm. Uh, Bryn Ross coming through the hairpin now. Second place, Scotty Nolan will be in third. Tell you what, Devin is only two seconds behind him. One. It's a lot to ask, but he's been on the charge. Another interesting battle that may come to fruition is Damien Rasmussen and Steve Bulger. So Rasmussen's pace has fallen off quite a bit. He's actually lost six seconds to World Definition. If you remember, it was only a few laps ago that he was in an intense battle with the Honda. Um, Bulger is only two and a half seconds back and reeling him in at a rate of knots. So I'll keep an eye on that, uh, this last lap, and we'll see how that all pans out. Mm. Bit of last minute drama, and they're the only battles on track. Definitely the car has had him basically shark bites taken out of both sides. I think that might just be the, the damage model. I don't think that's actually... Ooh, Rasmussen's off! Rasmussen's off at turn four! Ooh, ooh, ooh yes he is. He's just, what, well, he's just uh, outbraked himself potentially. Possibly. I'll quickly scroll through and have a look. Um, he might have... Yeah, it just looks like he ran out of brakes. He just he just nosed into the tyres and uh, that was... Yeah, that's that's that position gone. So that battle on track. And Brendan Hobson's... Brendan Hobson's off. Whoa, whoa, what? He's, he's stopped. He's just come to a rest. Whoa. Heading into the fast S's. He's he run out of fuel. As he run out of Hello. fuel. Oh, Damien's going to give him a bit of a push. That's... um. Wow. He's... He's done too many laps. He's too quick. He's done too many laps and he's run out of fuel. Wow. You know what that means? It means Damien, uh, sorry, Brendan Ross is going to win. Oh. Uh, 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 what? Ben Miles has a drive through penalty. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. But yeah. Classic Miles. Brendan Ross is going to cross the line one second ahead of Scotty Nolan to take out victory in a race two here at Adelaide. I know, unless, unless the Synergy Sim Racing the fraternity is going to throw a dive bomb. No, he's not quite. They might also be in fuel trouble as well, but Brendan Ross, he's flashing the lights as he comes across the line. And yes, it will be Brendan Ross taking the win over Scott Nolan and then Will Devonish in third place. Oh, the victory what, crash. Ha what happened to there? Wow. Wow. He crossed the line to, to start lap 20 with about 12 seconds left on the clock. And he had a 35 second gap as well. So wow. had he... It, it, oh, that's... That's nasty. He's messed that up. He has He's proper messed that up. That's... 
crazy. He's going to finish in seventh unless Rasmussen scoots by him when he gives him a push across the line. Jimmy Just to round out the rest of the field, uh, it was Definition third, Steve Bolger in fourth, Termo fifth, Brock Harvey in sixth, and then it, here is Brandon Hobson getting pushed to the finish by Damien Rasmussen as they come into the final corner. Uh, he will, yeah, possibly come home seventh. Is, it, is, that, is Damo going to do the dog act and just take off on him? Yes, he is. Uh, yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> I, I mean, well-deserved as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Rasmussen seventh, Hobson eighth, Luke, Luke Joyner comes through ninth. And that should be Ushi Rake just waiting on Clarison across the line in 11th place, one lap down. And so, Cam Rutledge rounded out the 10. Uh, then it was... Uh, Kerrison, who's in 11th, Darren in 12th, Glenn Miles has just crossed the line in 13th. Um, and then the string of non-finishes, Brian Walsh, who had an uh, engine failure. Then it was Lime Mitch, who had another uh, an engine failure of his own. Mike Coulston, with that big accident that we saw onto the back straight. Wayne Whitmore blew his engine. Uh, Cracker and Neville were involved in first lap incidents. And then the enigmatic Wayne was disqualified for not serving his pit stop uh, infringement. Wow. wow! Never, never ceases to amaze. Does this series? And we do have Brenton Ross in the booth with us. Uh, Brenton, firstly, welcome to TCAC, and secondly, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That's one way to um do your first round. So um I'm quite happy with how it ended. Uh yeah. So. Firstly, uh, well, again, I would say again, welcome to TCAC. You've raced a bit in Automobilist Australia before. Just tell us a bit about the other series that you've been racing in so we can get a bit of an idea of how good you should be. I don't know about how good, but um, I'm mainly known for every other series, probably bar this series. So um, that's where I come from, but um, mainly from the FCR stables and whatnot. But um, yeah, that's just me. Awesome. Uh, so coming into that last lap, what did you think when you saw uh, Hobbo perched at the end of, what was it, turn seven uh, in the, the runoff there? What, what the heck goes through your mind at that point? Uh, there was a lot of things, but I wasn't expecting that one. I was three laps from the end um, as Scotty got his drive through and I noticed that I was going to be short on fuel. I needed to squeeze three laps into two laps of fuel. So um I coughed across the line, and to um, to win it was very surprising. <laughs> Finally, on the note of a drive-through, we noticed that you got a drive-through penalty mid-race. Did you did you actually serve that, or did it clear when you took your pit stop? No, I served it. I served okay. the lap before I took the pit stop. There was okay. Way to control pit lane entries. So. <laughs> oh, that was that was your slide. They correctly on slide. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I must have missed that because it, it looked it looked to me at least when you came in that it was showing the drive through penalty and then you stopped in your pit box. So I was very confused by that. <laughs> nah, yeah, that one got served. So yeah, that's just a fast pit lane. So um, I expected mm. it to drop behind Will, but to come out in front of him was surprising. And you had a, lo a lot of really good battles with Will Devnish in that race. Uh, yeah, how do you, how are you finding the TCAC series on your first event? Are you, are you enjoying the intensity of it? Oh, I love I love slow car racing it's <laughs> i guess you can put this in this category um but i think driving it in the fun runs is what pulled me over i was only gonna do a couple of rounds but um i seem to be half decent mid-pack so i might stay around half decent mid mid-pack as he <laughs> takes the second race of the weekend congratulations uh brendan ross uh on your first victory in tcac thanks guys Second for the evening was Scott Nolan. A pair of second places for you, Scott. Take us through how you ran that last race. Uh, very similar to the first. I don't know what happened off the start. I'm not sure if I caused it or... I felt like I got hit up the rear and then I spun Gary. So apologies if it was my fault, but I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to go back and watch it. But I had like even worse steering damage this one. So And it's just weird. It just one minute you'll go through the corner and it'll be, it'll be like pretty normal, and the next minute it's just under steer city. So, uh, yeah, got another penalty, which was great. And gifted away a win, which whatever. Like, Hobbo owned us, so he should have the double win. And kudos to uh, Damo that pushed him home, I think. Um, yeah, good effort there. Good sportsmanship. But, um, yeah, look, two, uh, two seconds. This is good. It's good for the points. I think we'll, from that, we should be leading it. Um, but yeah, got a lot of work to do. 
Um, just to compound a bit of misery on you, uh, with your pair of second places and Hobson's, uh, we'll say, aborted finish to that second race, you're going to be taking the biggest weight penalty into round two. How does that make you feel? Oh, yeah, doesn't matter. Everyone's going to get weight penalties. Um, it'll all even out. It sort of does. So, um, yeah, it's all good. He'll get he'll get a pair of first next next round and be on more weight or something like that. Not, so. not if he, he blows nah. another engine. <laughs> Yeah, well, well he's, out of fuel. We were, he could hear he could hear what we were saying in the chat in his ear. So we were giving him a fair bit of crap, telling him to get some drive throughs, crossing the line backwards. I think came out uh, in reverse. Uh, yeah, a few different things, and then he just decided to downshift early. So, um, oh, well, he'll oh, be so kick, it was a, he'll was be kicking blown, himself. Was, was a blown engine? We thought he ran out of fuel. No, I think he blew his engine, according to mm. what I heard. Yeah, okay. no, we we filled the car right up because of our crew chief, who's. Some dude in Hobbo's chat said run 55 litres and it was wrong. So we had full <laughs> fuel. So we had, I think, 10 litres or 12 litres too much. But that's all right. Fantastic. Uh, so, yeah, first round of the series out of the way. Um, now that you've got two races under your belt, are you looking forward to the rest of the series? you reckon the, sta- uh, the, the racing is going to be good? You're enjoying the standard? I think it'll be door-to-door. Um, I think, uh, you know, the, the racing, the way... It all should happen to being, you know, sort of outlined from the start. I think uh, we'll give Damo a bit of a tap and redress. And I think I did something similar to that in the last series. I think that's a good way to be. Um, there's not too many penalties come out of this series. So uh, I think, you know, the gentleman redress is probably the best way to go about it. I like it. Uh, but, yeah, the, the standard's good. There's no no dramas. Um, everyone's been good. Lap traffic was good. And um, I think it'll be close racing. I think once a few other guys get a handle on the car, which... I only really got in practice tonight. Um, yeah, I think it'll be even closer at the top. Fantastic. Congratulations on your pair of seconds for the weekend, Scott. Thanks, guys. And third place this evening and the very end was Will Devonish. Will, you had a bit of an interesting race one and two. You got involved in a few touch-ups throughout the field. Uh, tell us a bit about your races this tonight. Uh, to be honest, it was a bit of a miserable night, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, 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 it's taking a while to get my head around this car. It's um, it's a front wheel drive. It's not a front wheel drive, and it just doesn't know how to how it wants to be driven half the time. So, um, Hobbo obviously knows how to tune into his cars a lot faster than uh, the rest of the field. Um, but yeah, it's um, echoed by uh, Scott um, and Rossi. I think this season will be a lot of uh, bump and runs and uh, rubbing's racing, so I look forward to that. That's what we want us commentators. We're actually the yeah, on the certain, certainly gives us a lot to talk about. Uh, you had great battles uh, throughout the night with Ross and Damien Rasmussen. Uh, yeah, are you uh, do you enjoy that level of intensity, or would you rather do a hobo and get out the front and just leave everyone behind? Um, yeah, I, I I prefer to be um, running against. Uh, someone um uh, makes the race a bit more interesting even if uh, they tip you off at the last corner yeah which happened both races <laughs> yeah i'm okay with that <laughs> um okay you heard that you heard it here first everyone if you're listening <laughs> just you just definish off yeah. yeah uh I, I like these these cars i'm just i don't feel competitive so um even even though we were like close with a lot of people i like i had to be really on it and i don't feel that that they were probably pushing as hard as i had to so um, I think they'll iron out through the season. Fair enough. Well, you got another, what is it, eight rounds of the season um, left to iron out any kinks. So you got a you got plenty of time to sort it out. you probably get it sorted out just for the Phillip Island Enduro and then leave these cars behind never to be touched again. Yeah, I don't like Phillip Island either. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so so this is the six months where you just tear your hair out and yeah pretty much <laughs> try, and, try, and, try and lobby brock to make something that's more pliable to your taste for next season um yeah i think a few of us are keen on this uh um atcc mod he's got yeah. coming which is looks looks very nice so i think that'll be a lot of fun when it when it launches and he's uh, done all these touch-ups to it fantastic well thank you very much for your comments this evening and congratulations on a third place thank you and just because we have him here, Brendan Hobson, what the hell, man? No, we have to do something to keep it interesting, don't we? Spice things up. Um, still, I was talking about earlier on in my stream, I think before the first race, about um, adjusting to the 
the heel toe um, right foot braking thing. And the other thing I'm sort of trying to get used to again is just the H pattern shifter, which I don't drive a lot of stuff with the H pattern. And I just uh, wrong gated it from fifth to third, which I did a few times in the practice session and blew up as well. So um, you waited yeah. till the last lap. The I know. Last lap. <laughs> I know. I was pretty upset about it too because um, I mean, ultimately, all night I felt I feel like I. I had a faultless night up until then. So I was actually really happy with how I'd driven, but, um, and I still am, but that's just a bit disappointing for it to be so anticlimactic right at the end, like the last mm. lap. But, I mean, I did, um, I did do that a few times by accident. I was worried that I might do it at some point and yeah, just, just wrong gated to third gear instead of fifth and over revved. Um, easy to do something I'll probably do again before the end of the season, but, um, no, it keeps it interesting, keeps it spicy. Congrats to the other guys who took advantage from that. And thanks obviously to, uh, so the rat's mouse for uh, hooking me up with a push back to the line. So, I mean, a DNF, if I understand correctly, a DNF in points is super bad. So, um, I mean, an eighth place is a lot better than zero points. But, I mean... And an eighth place doesn't give you any penalty on the weight as well. So, you just 40 strats up in this. Yeah, I've thought it out really well. I mean, <laughs> I could have had a 45-second win or I could have looked like an idiot and chose to look like an idiot. So, it was good... Good choice, I think. Yeah, this is the spirit of the series. And speaking of the spirit of the series, we also got Damon Ratson in there. Damo, uh, first lap pit, uh, came back through the field. You ran, uh, I looked like you begin, began to run out of tyres at the end there. Um, so good job uh, chucking, chucking Hobbo across the line and yeah. taking the position at the end as well. <laughs> Had to get something for the reward. Um, yeah, I was way back. I started last, I think, and I didn't have much choice. I'm going to get out of traffic and hope the tyres lasted. They didn't. It's yep. uh, sort of <laughs> 10 minutes to go. It went terrible. And then Will came out and battled with Will for a bit. And then it made it worse. And yeah, I, I think I lost two spots for pushing Hobbo. I don't know. I'd, I'd prefer to have this championship go down to the wire and not be decided by a DNF, like something silly like that. So it's all part of racing. At the end of the day, it's a bit of a fun series. So is what it is. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, congratulations on keeping the spirit of the series right at the front, forefront of your mind. I think that's everyone. I think that's everyone who came into chat. So, so what you're saying is we should say thank you and apologize again for the tardiness in getting this show on the road. It, um, yeah, damn it, Kiwi. Yeah. Um, I literally came from soccer training. I was ready to go like full stink and everything and you weren't even here. God damn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got work took a little bit longer than one would have thought but that's it for tonight hope you enjoyed race two and as always michael congratulations on the commentary in the race one the radio show thank you very much i do try to paint pictures with words yes and you do a bloody good job of that especially when you're right now as well oh yes thank you uh we can we can tell that story another time we will but on behalf of michael i'm chris we will see you in a couple of weeks time for the race at northamptonshire which i'm not entirely sure what that's going to be it could be silverstone it could be rocking them it could be something else who knows <laughs> we'll find out in two weeks time for now have a good evening <laughs>